Today, let's see how to create Stalazid Fire in Unreal. We are gonna see how to come up with very interesting fires for your games with one simple trick in the material editor, Erosion, and a couple more of cool textures. As usual, we made a few more variations and they are all available on the marketplace and on my Patreon's page too, links below. So, without further ado, let's jump right into this. Just wanna say these videos are possible thanks to my patrons and by supporting me, you get access to these and many more assets you can use in your games. And for this stylized fire, let's start with the material instead of the meter. So with right click on a folder, new material, call it fire, double click to open this up and in here, on the details panel, let's first say the blend mode is additive. From there, if we want this to work with Niagara colors, we are going to need this module, the particle color, so Niagara can basically communicate with the material. From there we need a texture, so let's search for parameter 2D, call it flame, and then we just need to multiply these two together with RGB and connect it to the emissive color. I also connected RGBA to opacity, but only after recording I realized it was alpha, which is fine, both will work. I'm gonna assign this text, which is available on the link below for free. It's part of this Niagara Stylized Fire Pack, available on the marketplace, by the way, and on my Patreon. Let's save this material, and we are gonna test this out in Niagara. But let's first create a material instance, it's a good practice to keep the original material separated from the instance, by the way. Right click, material instance, and let's create an Agri system for the sized fire. Double click to open it up, and in here we are gonna add an emitter with right click, and start with an empty. From there, the first thing we can do is change the material in the sprite renderer to the one, to the instance we created, exactly like this. We probably won't see anything because it isn't spawning, this emitter. So on the emitter update, let's search for a spawn rate. So it continuously spawns a value of 20, for example, per second. And now let's play with initialized particle where we can say lifetime is random between 1 and 1.7, more or less. We are going to work on the motion. We can also say the color is for example 30 for the R, 3.5 for the G, and 1 for the B. And at this point we have this bright flame. The process of creating the texture is very important also. I recommend you to check out this tutorial. It's for Unity, but you will learn how to create the textures. Right, back in Niagara, let's play with the size. On the sprite size mode, let's say it's random uniform, between 15 and 20. And let's also say the rotation is random, so they all spawn with a different rotation. And now let's make sure they don't spawn in the exact same position. For that we can use a shape location. It can be a sphere, the, the shape primitive, yes, but with a small radius, for example, between 4 and 10, it should be fine for the flames. And now we can add a little bit of motion to this so they go up, you know. And on the particle spawn we can use the add velocity. We get a warning, it's basically saying that we are missing a few modules. We can click fix issue and Niagara will automatically add soul forces and velocity. For the add velocity, we can use it in a cone shape, and the velocity is very important. It shouldn't be too much, something between 1 and 25. I'm gonna decrease a little bit the cone angle, so they don't spread too much to the sides, like 40, and yeah, we want them to go up, so the cone axis is gonna be 1 on the Z and 0 for the X and Y. And here we go we are starting to have something, as you can see. There's room for improvement, for example, we can make sure they rotate throughout their lifetime and that they shrink towards the end of their lifetime. On the particle update, let's first search for a sprite rotation rate, which can also be a random range float between minus 60 and 60. Some will rotate clockwise and others will rotate counterclockwise. And now with the scale sprite size, we can make sure that they start big with this curve right here and at the end they shrink a little bit let's select this and say it's 0 0.6 and if we select all of the keys we can say it's auto so it isn't so linear and we can fix the handle like this you can press a to see the wall curve and here we go they are rotating and shrinking looking good 
Now the cool thing is that since we have a material of our own, we can for example say that they will erode throughout the end of their lifetime. Let's go back to the material. We can do exactly that in a very simple way. There's a few ways to do it, but we can for example use a texture. I'm actually going to create the power node first and then add a texture sample. It could also be parameter 2D. The difference is that parameter 2D will be exposed and you can control it outside of the material editor. And on this texture sample, we can assign the Voronoi, which is also another texture that comes for free on the link below. And if the texture sample is connected to the power, it means we can dissolve the Voronoi. And why is that important? Because if we multiply now the flame with this power, we have a way of controlling how much Voronoi we want to affect our flame. And if all of this is connected to another power node, we can control the erosion of the wall flame. So the first one controls how much Voronoi is going to affect the flame, and the second one controls how much the flame is eroded. So how do we control this through Niagara? Well, essentially there is this dynamic parameter node that will do exactly that. It has four parameters and we can even rename them. For example, the first one can be for the power of the Voronoi and the second one for the erosion of the flame. Now we can connect this to the power here of the Voronoi and the other one to the erosion of the flame. Make sure that the default value is 1, 1. Now if we save this material and go back to our Niagara system, we can access those dynamic parameters through a dynamic parameter module. And if we add it to the particle update, it means we can animate these values. The power I'm going to say it's 0 to 8, it could be 1. And for the erosion of the flame, we can use a curve, convert this to a curve. And the idea is to select everything and say their value is 7. So it is pretty much eroded. Because now, if we add a key at around 0 to 2 and say that the value is 1, is that the flame will start eroded for a little while and it will be visible and then it will erode totally until the end of its lifetime. It could actually be a 0 to 1, the key. I'm going to select all of these again and say it's auto mode, so we can control these handles. And here we go. This is how it looks. As you can see, it is eroding away throughout the end of its lifetime. And it looks a much more interesting flame. And in the beginning, it's also eroding. At least it doesn't appear out of nowhere. I'm going to rename these with F2 to flames. And now let's create the smoke, which is also a very simple process. We can duplicate this with Ctrl D or copy and paste it with Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Rename it to smoke with F2. I'm going to isolate this on this icon. Now let's duplicate this instance and call it AB, which is essentially alpha bladed. In other words, it's translucent, which is exactly what we are going to do when we open this material. In the material properties overwrite, we want to say the blend mode is translucent, otherwise we cannot render black colors with additive. Let's save it. And on the sprite render of the smoke, let's add the fire AB. Here we go. Let's decrease a little bit the rate because we are going to increase its lifetime. So each particle is going to leave more and there will be more particles on the scene. For example, between 2.3 and 2.7. This is the values we tested that look alright. You can test different values, of course. And for the color, completely black. Let's say the value is 0. It can also be bigger, the flames, between 27 and 32. And the radius of the sphere can also be a bit bigger, like 5. And, well, this one could go higher in terms of velocity, like 10 and 30. And what I'm going to do here on the scale sprite size is push this key to the front, like 0 0.2. So we can add another key and say that it's zero. This way the smoke will start smaller. I'm going to decrease the power of the Voronoi, so the Voronoi becomes a little bit more persistent, more visible, in other words. There will be more whites. I actually recommend it to test different values to better understand what it does. And now it's very important that on the sprite render, down here on the rendering, the sort order hint is minus one, so it renders below the flames. This is isolated, and it's how it looks. Very, very nice, actually. If you ask me, it's beautiful flames. With just one texture and one material, we can get a very interesting stylized fire going on. Now, one of the last things we can do is add some embers flying around. By duplicating the flames with Ctrl-D, renaming it with F2 to embers, 
let's isolate it and for example on the spawn rate we can say it's 10 if you don't want that many embers on initialized particle they are gonna leave more 1.5 and 2.5 I'm gonna copy with right click this color so you can say the color mode is random range and basically paste it to the maximum color and to the minimum but on the minimum we can decrease the value to 1 this will create a cool variation between some embers that are brighter and others are more dull we want this to be small like 1 and 1.5 for the sprite size on the shape yeah it can be 5 as well and on the velocity they should fly a little bit higher at least the minimum between 8 and 25 I don't want them to spread too much to the side so I'm going to decrease the radius the cone angle to 35 and on this case on the sprite size the first key is going to be 0 and then we can add another key at around 0 0.2 and say it's 1.5 so they grow a little bit and then they shrink towards the end of their lifetime to 0 yeah let me fix this first handle exactly like this here we go perhaps they don't need to rotate that much this is just details let's remove the dynamic material param because it won't make that much of a difference it can have the default values what we need is a vortex force it's like a turbulence so they don't go in a straight line and the amount can be I'm not gonna exaggerate I'm gonna use a 20 let's fade them out by the way with scale color by simply saying the last key of the color is black this way it will fade out that is essentially it as you can see some are brighter others aren't that much brighter and we get some nice embers flying around it's looking very good in my opinion i hope this was helpful to you i'm just gonna drag this to the scene niagara system and that's pretty much it we have done quite a few variations from these and they are all available on the marketplace and on my patreon as well as on my website links below by supporting me on my patreon you get access to plenty more assets by the way that you can use in your games or study up close I'm gonna say thank you to each patron that supported me last month and as usual a quick shout out to the top tier patrons which are Alberto Sageris, Alexei, Alan Alstead, Aviat Tobali, Cybercradle, Daniel Schmidt, Deluxe Adu, Dayaku, Diego Marcos, Lua Alma, Dripple, Ed Terima, Frosty40, Grub Lab, Jared Billy, Jonathan Carlson, Casey Miller, Cantal Sversfer, Leon Holt, Matt Moran, Mike Bell, Mike Young, Loops Da, Oitsk, Pierre Mario Roux, Pradip Sen, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, RVR, Sean Aguilar, Spence, Stefanik Krasnowski, Tin, Travis McCollum, Verisuta, Whatever Marta, Will Pullion, Bijina Seru, to Nakato, Xian Pianling, and Min Jae Kim. So thank you all very much. I hope you are enjoying this new series of Unreal Engine tutorials, and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye.